Morning all. If you visit chesspole.net, I'm working on the My Stuff My Country page and I wanted to show the chess legends of each country and I thought that I haven't really covered many games of the chess legends in different countries, you know, a great diversity of great players in our beautiful game. And I thought I'd start with Brazil. Brazil did have a legend does have rather a legendary player, Henrik Mecking. And the game I'm going to show you is from the Cautionary Mecking Candidates chess match played in Augusta 1974. Uh, before I do, just a little bit of background um, about Mecking from Wiki. So born 1952, also known as Mekino, is a, he's a Brazilian chess grandmaster who reached greatest momentum in the 1970s and is still one of the strongest players in Brazil. So Brazil, of course, hosting the current World Cup. So I thought, yeah, nice to choose a Brazilian player. He was a child prodigy and he drew comparisons to Bobby Fischer, although he did not achieve the international grandmaster title until 1971. He won the interzonals of Petrop Petropolis 1973 and Manila 1976. His highest FIDE rating was 2635, achieved in 1977 when he was ranked free in the world. He was the first Brazilian to become a grandmaster. Despite winning his first national championship at the age of 13, he played in very few tournaments. He won at Versac in 1971 and finished third with Robert Byrne after Karpov and Cautionary at Hastings in 1971 and 72. In 1975, he twice shared behind Lubomir Laboyevich, firstly at Las Palmas and off Anderson Mikhail Tower, then at Manila with Lev Pol Gyavsky, Bent Larsen, and Helmut Pleger. Mekin played for the Brazil uh, team in the Chess Olympiads of 1968, 74, 2002, and 2004. So let's go with this game. E4 against Cautionary in their match. Candidates match 1974. Cautionary responded with E5. And we have Roy Lopez. After A6, making decided to use the exchange variation. Bishop takes C6. So giving a very, very dangerous player, Victor Cautionary, the bishop pair in return for some structural damage. Right now castled. Cautionary now played the second most popular move, which is Queen D6. The most popular is, just, is F6 here. We see now D3. Another idea popular is Knight A3 there instead of D3. F6, Bishop E3. Now usually players with black play the move C5 here, but this is also popular, Bishop G4. Knight BD2. And now Victor Cautionary castled. This is a little bit on the controversial side, you might think. It's a bit provocative in cautionary style to provoke the opponent to go for an attack to unbalance the positions. Usually in this position, knight e7 is played, but cautionary castling queenside here. So how do we uh, play this as white? Well, Mecking played now rook b1. He has a plan to simply play the pawn to b4, and basically, even if the king wasn't on the queen side, this would represent a dangerous minority attack to inflict structural damage on black's pawn structure. We see now the move knight e7, b4, and now cautionary attacks on the other side. So a very exciting scene has been set. Kings on opposite sides of the board here is, is often very exciting. a4, this is how they played in the 70s. Cut and thrust game, violent, aggressive, going for each other's king. So knight g6, the knight can come now to f4, and if it ever takes, black would have that g-file, or the knight could even come to h4, or even just, just carry on with h5 and leave the knight for a moment. b5, though, is black's king in safety? Is the safety of black's king compromised, rather? c takes, a takes, a takes, rook takes b5. Okay, here now we see the move queen c6, and okay, the first thing to observe here is queen b4, queen queen b1, okay, protecting the rook. I think this is playable. The engine does suggest this. This shouldn't be too bad for white to just play this. But what would actually be the follow-up? Maybe rook a5 or knight c4. So yeah, it seems uh, a good idea, queen b1, as well as uh, what was played, which was actually rook b3. 
two. Funny enough, Rook B two at a, a, a much larger depth is also being shown by my engine here, which is Stockfish five. It can't actually make its mind up between Rook B two and Queen B one for a moment. So not much to distinguish them. Okay, so Rook B two, Queen A one is always possible then, and doubling here. Bishop c5 was played. Now knight b3, not minding the double pawns here. That will prevent the knight using f4 though, these double pawns. Does cautionary want to do that? When he avoided that, he played bishop b4. And there's a slight weakness of the last move here. This d4 square is not covered as strongly now by black. And I wonder if you could spot the move that white played in this position. If I give you 10 seconds to pause the video, starting from now. Okay, the move was knight fd4. So hitting the queen, breaking the artificial pin, it wasn't a real pin, when it's not against the king it's not a real pin. So these, these moves always have to be factored in. Okay, so cautionary actually took on d4 here. Um, maybe taking might actually be technically better to accept this. And now here, uh, with the bishop attacked, this bishop can't really be moved. So black would be forced to play b takes. After rook takes, white stands better. Uh, but in the game, actually, cautionary played e takes d4, allowing queen takes g4 check. So white's in the driving seat here. Now, this has been a good choice of opening. It hasn't been around any pressure points around the king, just the tactic winning um, a small advantage here for white. Uh, it wasn't winning a pawn or anything, it's still six pawns each, three, six, six pawns each, but the light square bishop, which was covering a lot of these squares, that was an important asset for black. So queen d7, but now actually, also white is actually winning a pawn, but it seems as though it could backfire. It seems as though white's winning a pawn. White played queen takes d7 check here, and after rook takes, uh, played a move which uh, very, very was very very clever actually this move he played actually knight takes d4 it seems to potentially backfire although it's getting a pawn and attacking the bishop what about bishop c3 that's the question well rook a2 now is played threatening mate in one so cautionary though has something seemingly clever to win material here now. Rook takes d4. So I guess this had to be carefully calculated by Mecking. This position. Uh, this not winning a rook because the knight's actually protecting the rook. This check is, is harmless. So here, with the rook attacked, can you see what white plays in this position uh, to maintain material? White plays a, a, a strong move in this position. If I gave you 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, white played rook a3. And so white is winning the material back. Black just gave up the bishop here with rook b4. If he tries to hold on to material, bishop b2, then rook b3. And uh, now Black is losing material. He's going to be losing that bishop if the rook moves. Rook takes b2. So Caution decided to lose the bishop like this. Rook b4, rook takes c3. So white is now officially a pawn up. Uh, is there any counterplay to deal with? Rook e8, uh, preventing d4. But now f3 renews the idea that d4 would be nice to cut out the knight from e5, king d7. Rook a1. A good move, maybe 
uh, to play like this. Maybe go down to the eighth. Rook b5. King comes in. King d6. Rook a to a3. H5. Rook a4. Now rook d4 check could be useful to try and win the c7 pawn if the king moves off. c6 protecting c7 but creating some dark square weaknesses. Rook c a3. Here now white is slowly improving the position and has options like rook a5 now. g4. This is very solid this triangle. The knight hasn't got too many good squares. Rook a5 process of simplification here the rook can't move without losing h5 rook e e5 so simplifying and now white plays f takes g4 after h takes g4 this is a bit of a liability now king g3 the king comes in to attack the pawn cautionary is falling to bits here rook b1 the king can take here, the engine suggests this is safe enough, but white can also play a bit more slowly. There's no rush here. Uh, he plays actually bishop d4, looking at f6 as well. Rook c1, that's protected. b5, white now takes on f6, b4. Rook b3 attacking b4 but giving up c2, but uh, caution is not interested in that. He's in a bad way here. Rook f1, bishop g5, black plays now c5, c3 breaking up black's two pawns here. b takes, rook takes, and that's a nice target for the bishop as well. Rook d1, and then bishop e3, white having a massive advantage here. Cautionary apparently, cautionary apparently played c4 and resigned with this move. White can simply, well, either play d4. That, that's good as well. We'll just take the pawn. That's good as well. But uh, black just resigned now. So it was an interesting game. And um, I propose that this series, we change the country on each uh, video added to this particular playlist. So starting with Brazil, maybe we can pick the countries in the current Football World Cup and then carry on after that. But uh, yeah, I think um, I don't want this situation of neglect of these uh, very notable players just because you know, um, most of the hype nowadays, most of the interest rather, is is with the likes of um, Carlson or, or other greats. But uh, you know, each country had its own legendary players and I think those should be celebrated. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.